Hi, Pre-K. I'm Miss Jessa, and I'm coming to you from a jungle. Not really. That would be very cool if I was coming to you from a jungle. But we're here today because we have a very important question to ask. Do animals communicate? I know a lot of you are thinking, I understand the question, but that's a big word. What does it mean to communicate? To communicate means to share your ideas, your feelings, and your thoughts. And we can do that in many different ways. I can use my words to say, I'm excited. I could use my body language to communicate that I'm excited. I could even communicate making a noise. <gasps> People use their words to communicate all over the world using different languages. I use English to say hello. Hello. Hola, konnichiwa, shalom. And those are just a few of the over 6,500 spoken languages on planet Earth. Which is pretty cool. Kind of makes you want to think about learning a new language. But back to animals. Yes, just like people, animals also need to share information. They communicate where to find food, they tell their parents if they're hungry, and they warn each other if there's danger. But does a baby bird speak English to ask for food? Um, Mom, I don't mean to bother you, but I'd really like some food. No! <laughs> they chirp, they open their mouths to show that they're ready for some food. What do you think these two kittens are communicating? Probably that I love you so much I want to squish your face. And probably, I love you enough to let you squish my face. Come on. Do you want to go for a walk? This dog is communicating that he does not want to go for a walk. So now that we know what it means to communicate, we're going to learn about the different ways that animals communicate in the wild. Some roar, some sing, some dance, some puff up their chests to look bigger than they are and to scare off others. Some use their color to communicate, some use their print, some use smell, and many, many more. So why don't we learn about animals who roar and what does that mean? Roars, growls, and howls. Many animals make very loud sounds that scare other animals away. Tigers and lions are big cats that have very long voice boxes, which allows them to make really long and loud roaring sounds. Roar. <laughs> Smaller cats, such as cheetahs and cougars, cannot roar. Instead, they growl to let others know it is not a good day. Grr. Gorillas let out a really loud growl and they beat their chests to let others know that they need to stay away from their family. <laughs> and wolves howl to stay in touch with their pack, but also to let the other animals know that they are in the forest and to stay away. <laughs> Here's an example. Humpback whales sing songs. Not all sounds made by animals are warning sounds. Some sounds are made by whales to find other friends. Humpback whales sing long songs that are made up of sounds such as high chirps and humming. The songs last about 15 minutes and they're repeated over and over and over again until they find that friend. They also like to jump out of the water to show them, I'm here. Come find me. Sounds 
such a special song that is unique to this whale. Some birds sing and dance. Birds sing and dance to attract other birds like themselves. They have their own special song and dance. And when a boy bird and a girl bird decide that they would like to have a family, they sing and dance until they find one another. Peacocks like to dance, but they are super fancy and they like to use their big feathers to show everyone how beautiful they are. Watch this bird of paradise sing and dance for its partner. Some birds choose not to dance. Instead, they like to build nests and give gifts to others. So here the weaver bird builds a nest to show a mommy bird that they're ready for babies. And over here we have a road runner who chose to hunt a lizard to show he's ready to feed a family. Did you know that penguins give gifts to their partners in the form of rocks? They go searching for not just any rock, the most specialist, the most biggest rock that they think that their partner is gonna like. And they bring it over to create a nest because they're sending the message that I would like to make a family with you. Isn't that sweet? Oh, off to find more rocks. Some animals choose to just be bigger and to look bigger. Animals make themselves look bigger so that predators, animals that might want to hurt it, are scared. Because when you see a very big lizard with a huge frill coming at you, you might get scared away. Or this frigate bird with a huge sack on its neck, puff up, that might tell a predator to go away. Same with the frog. It also shows its friends that, hey, I can protect you. This is the frilled neck lizard. When it's upset or it's worried, it looks like this. Watch out. Now this is cool. Some animals communicate just by showing their color or pattern. I'm warning you. Animals that use color, shapes, and patterns on their body are telling predators, you probably don't want to eat me because I might have poison. Poison that can make the animals that eat them feel sick or even kill them. Brightly colored fish, snakes, insects, and frogs such as these poisonous dart frogs are deadly to eat. And also, ouch, that's sharp. Some animals are covered with sharp spines that look like big needles. The texture of the spines communicate that the bodies of these animals are dangerous to touch. Just like this hedgehog and this lionfish and this porcupine. This silly cheetah thinks it's a match for a porcupine, but no, 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 no. Those quills are very sharp and that cheetah is no match for this porcupine. You better go home, cheetah. Now this one's interesting. Scent or smell messages. Many animals leave behind special smells. These smells might be sprayed into the air or they might be mixed with urine, which is another word for pee. These smells are used to mark their territory and let other animals know that this area belongs to them. So see this lynx here? That's this big cat. This lynx pees on this tree to let other animals know that this is the home for many other lynxes. And this skunk definitely lets this little baby bear know it's scared by spraying its very smelly scent. It also tells the animal I probably won't smell good and I won't taste good to eat. Now this cat is rubbing its scent all over its owner because he loves 
his owner so much. Now this is very sweet. We all use touch to communicate. Many animals use touch to greet one another. Giraffes press their necks together, and elephants do the same with their trunks just to say hello and I love you. Monkeys touch hands to greet each other, kind of like how we shake hands. And many kinds of animals like to hug each other and greet each other with kisses. For example, take this lynx mom, this big cat mom. She is licking her baby cub to show love. This is very cute. These two iguanas are giving each other a hug just to say, I love you. And dolphins, they greet each other by touching flippers. They also use their flippers to touch their babies to make them feel safe. Just two elephants hugging. Wow. Now that we've learned the many different ways that animals communicate in the wild, I want you to do research on your favorite animal and learn how it communicates. How does it communicate that it's hungry? How does it communicate that it's sad? That it's happy? That it wants help? That it's worried and it's in danger? Find out and video yourself communicating as that animal. I'll give you a little clue about what who my favorite animal is. Oh. Happy learning. If you guessed a dog, you're right. Mwah.